Good morning, folks. Don't know if you've had a chance to catch Sunset Venus in the last few days, but she's blazing in the evening sky. Clear skies had me looking at Saturn and the moon last night as well. We'll set night on its way on Stellarium here and come back momentarily. Iris has opened its telescope door. Apparently she'll start blinking images for the public at the end of August. The wait continues. Folks, except for a 100% lack of solar vulnerability info about our grids, Kind of an epic fail given the title in my opinion. The rest it actually has some good information. I'm only showing the pretty pictures, but I promise every one of you will learn something, just not on a whim. You'll need an hour to dive into this. It was likely released to match the June Global Climate Report, which I've linked for you below the video with the maps and stats. Generally June was a warm month, but clearly that doesn't hold true everywhere. And that makes me want to come back to the U.S. climate report from June. They're claiming that these first six months of 2013 we've been above average for temperature and precipitation. Well, they're preaching to the choir on the rain, but temperature? Even though this map here is pretty darn clear, I'll go get the official six-month temperature chart they use for the U.S. and here, it is what it is, not so clearly above average temperature, and I bet I know where they can find 110,000 observers who are fully aware that cold records are beating heat records in 2013. That's their data. The data says extreme climate change, yet they tell the public we're warming. Two volcanoes on watch. Western South America now has three while we revisit the Virunga region of the Congo for another. Mr. Hamolka, stop eating my sesame cake. Sticking to North American weather today, West Coast should be hot and dry again with the pressure and that spinning cell out to sea clearing the way. Main low pressure cell is up in Canada. The convergence line swings southwest and is revealed nicely on the wind map. It shifts east a bit today and drops severe weather tonight. Back to Stellarium, sun rises here, Mars and Jupiter ready to conjoin. Invisible as of yet remains Comet Ison, right about here. As I turn on the constellation labels, three cheers for Lepus, ending the multi-week gamma ray burst drought just a few hours ago. Planets got me thinking. Folks, this is the JPL orbital diagram for Ceres 1. We have a heliocentric opposition of Venus and Uranus today. Also have Ceres heliocentrically opposing Mercury. And of course, you can see Mars and Jupiter will remain spread only a few more days themselves. No major solar flares, but that M-shaped double flare you see in the middle was resultant of filament release and hydro flaring. Double eruption left the eastern limb and will almost certainly miss Earth. Beautiful on the Soho Lasco C2. Sunspots in general are decaying. Southwest is gone, southeast needs a lot of work, and the north needs magnetic mixing to strengthen in the center, along with some larger central umbras. You remember we had that CME expected to hit Earth last night. You can see it here leaving the sun beneath that coronal hole three days ago. Three days also means we're looking for the speedy coronal hole stream. Left side shows increasing intensity to the solar wind and the KP index responds. I see a speed spike near a density plateau, the end of the day UTC, and also matching the end of instability. Thereafter, we see speedier particles with less density, not going to disturb our shield, but will take a cut at the electrons and give some very high readings on the hemispheric power, the energy entering our poles. We got that coronal hole quake watch, but it is ending. The next one, however, is already on the Earth-facing disk on the left. Plasma filaments in focus today. Eyes open. No fear. It's 6.50 a.m. Eastern Time, and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.